Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the developer chat here at Privateer Press for May 1st, 2019. I'm Dangerford, your lead developer. And with me is Danger, Danger Oz. Dangerford. Danger Oz. Our, you don't have a uh, hunger for danger? No, it was Dangerford. Come on, hunger for danger. Never mind. You're the, you're the uh, development manager. I am. And we're having a dev chat today. We are. So It's Wednesday. It is That's Wednesday. when we have dev chats. I was about to say, if you've never watched one of these before, we stream every Wednesday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. We do the dev chat on Wednesdays, where mm -hmm. it's usually me and Oz chit-chatting mm -hmm. about what's going on with CID, or in weeks like this, we're between CIDs, we're just going to kind of talk about what's going on. It's going to be general. a potpourri. This is going to be a little bit of a potpourri. Smorgasbord. Every Thursday is Get Your Paint On with Jordan Lamb, where Jordan paints different models or does conversions and talks to you about hobby tips and tricks. And then we have two monthly shows, The Staff Showdown, mm -hmm. where two or more of us get on here and play the games we make, and then Primecast Live, which is another potpourri show, mm -hmm. but has people from different departments we normally don't see on the streams. And you can yeah. always catch the videos after on YouTube. And that Staff Showdown is happening next Friday. We're playing Monpoc. And you and I are going to play some more Monpoc. Yep, I'm painting up my Bat Maxim right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, got to protect Gotham. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now, quick heads up, everyone. Uh, Twitch seems to be working fine, but Facebook is having some issues at the moment. So if you see anybody asking on Facebook what's going yeah. on. And, and people were talking on the Twitch chat already about the slight delay. It was because Facebook was timing out and we were, we were trying to get it. Both streams were getting at the same time. It was not Hamilton's fault. Had nothing to do with any no. kind of farm He's animals. A good boy. Not even chickens that are hypnotized by lines. <laughs> So, we had some interesting conversations yeah, this morning. Yeah, we were sitting around waiting for Tony and watching ran, random videos, but uh, whatever. Let's, let's talk about the mini crate real fast. Uh-huh. Let's do that thing. Mini crate. There it is, right there. Asphyxius the Damned. Uh-huh. He's available till May 19th, so you've got 19 days. Mm -hmm. Go get him, mini-crate.com. The VIP model is still the Bride of Arcadius, so if you do a six-month sub yep. in your next shipment, you will get the Bride of Arcadius, and if you don't own one, you should feel bad about yourself. Yeah, and that, that changes over the summer. Yep. And then uh, you only have four days left to get the current Legend of the Five Rings model, Kaito Kasori of the Phoenix Clan, uh, yes. at mini-crate.com slash L5R. Afterwards, and, that will change over. And the VIP model for that one is also going to change a little bit sooner than Bride of Arcadius. Okay. I, I don't remember exactly when L5R Mini Crate started, but the Naga is the VIP model. Mm -hmm. And the L5R Mini Crate VIP models on a six-month cycle just like the regular Mini Crates. So... That is getting closer and closer and closer to not being an option for you anymore. Cool. But we'll have more information about when that's going to change over when it gets much closer. Yeah. Uh, and also, Lock and Load is now officially next month. It is May. Yeah. So and the yeah. end of next month, June 21st through 23rd, here in Bellevue, Washington, mm -hmm. right in the middle of the summer where it's nice and beautiful around here. Tickets are sale right now. PPLockandLoad.com. Come hang out, play in some events, and uh, also spend some time to just Travel around the area. Go to Seattle. Get out. Go hiking. Go camping. It's like beautiful here. This time. Go to dinner with strangers. Go to dinner with strangers. Even if they have a van and they ask you to ride. Their but this van. might be bad. This is bad yeah. danger, go Oz. Go to dinner with with strangers. This is very bad danger, Oz advice. Don't yeah. go to dinner with. Privateer Press does not officially endorse going to dinner with strangers in vans. I do though. I totally endorse it. Danger, Oz's opinions are his own. Yeah. So. Yeah. We, we've got a, a little plethora of things to talk about right now. Uh -huh. We're in between CID cycles. And one of the things we want to talk about is what's happening with CID. So the Oblivion CID just ended. Yep. The Steamroller CID is starting next Wednesday. So next Wednesday's mm -hmm. dev chat will be talking about the new scenarios and the new objectives. Um, Steamroller C, uh, CID is going to last about a week and a half till the following Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. And it'll be time for everyone to play test the three new scenarios that have been replaced, the three brand new objectives that are not replacing the old objectives are going to be added in addition to them, and just generally have a conversation about Steamroller and, and where things are at right yep. now, and some of the design changes that went into these new scenarios. And we'll have a much broader conversation on that. After the Steamroller CID stops, um, it's time for a break. CID is going to go on a little bit of a break. Yeah, we talk about all the time that CIDs are controlled by the production schedule. And the production schedule of Infernals and Oblivion is fairly long compared to like the Tharn models that released or whatever. So that's going to stretch out a ways, which means we won't need another CID for brand new models for a little while. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean we that now we that like we haven't determined exactly when the next CID is happening, mm -hmm. but it is going to be a longer break than the last couple of breaks we've had. And this is a good thing. Right, sure. because we had to do the Infernal and the Oblivion CIDs at kind of breakneck speed. You know, they got about 10, 10 14 days each, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and that's because of how fast everything had to be finalized. Because once the CID ends, it's not like it ends, the final version you saw on the PDFs of the CID or what becomes live. There's another yeah. round of internal testing, which we're doing right now mm -hmm. with the most recent version of all the CID notes. Then it all gets locked. Then it all gets made yeah. official, right? And so because Infernals and all of these Archons and Order of Illumination models were in the same book, and that was two cycles for one release, it was a ton of stuff to get done very quickly. Yeah. Um, but there is also a concern in the community we see that, like, obviously the people want to see a lot of legacy models touched, but also the CIDs have been happening nonstop. There's been a CID. Well, we've had a couple of long breaks in, but the, not last, many. in the last two years. In the last two years. But, but generally, sometimes there's only a couple of weeks or a month between CIDs. And so you have this constant cycle of CIDs and then dynamic updates, which often can take six to eight weeks after because it ends up being involved with a lot more than just us. It has to go through mm -hmm. editing. People have to yeah. redesign the cards that go in the card database, and our designers are busy making lots of other things. Yeah, sometimes Riot Quest has to go to print. So post the Steamroller CID, you're going to see a break. Uh, we're not announcing exactly how long it's going to be, but I mean, mm -hmm. expect it to be fairly significant um, as we let things just sort of normalize for a bit. Let uh, the meta you know, stabilize and not mm -hmm. there be a constant rotation of, excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, new changes coming all the time. And then we'll jump right back into it and we'll let people know. Yeah. But I would say around the whole lock and load Gen Con time when we're all out and about and busy and we've got all these new things releasing like Riot Quest, new Monpoc models, Oblivion, mm -hmm. you're going to see a much smaller uh, amount of CID cycles. Uh, Quasitor says, are we still going to get dev chat though? Uh, I think so. Well, we might rotate Doug in more often and those kind of things. Like the show, the show format might mix up a little bit. Yeah. But we'll still be on as often as you can stand us. With the release of Riot Quest and all the new Monpoc stuff, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. And every Riot Quest model that comes out, they've got War Machine and Hordes rules for us to talk about. Yeah. So it's not like development doesn't have anything to get up here and discuss with all of you and, 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 and chat with. But, you know, maybe once a month or maybe more, we, we, we mix things up. Maybe there's a little bit of lore machine because yeah. Doug being on here is always fantastic. And, you know, we've only got so many days we can stream. There's only so much time. Uh, Nixu says, you know, like legacy models, you know, bring it up, but legacy models. We'll get to them in time, but it's, it's time for a little bit of a break. It's time to let things normalize, let the meta settle for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then we'll be jumping back into it. Mm -hmm. So speaking of what's been keeping us busy, and you know, because War Machine of Hordes is definitely the primary focus for a lot of our players, um, but there's a lot of other games we make. There uh, are a couple of the games we're making. One game that has been definitely exploding in popularity since its release late last year has been the second edition of Monster Apocalypse. And then we've got Riot Quest coming out mm -hmm. later this year. And those two games alone are taking up a lot of you and I's time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were so, just playing, playtesting some Monster Apocalypse yesterday. And Riot Quest yesterday. Yeah. So what we want to talk about today is, like, what have we been doing? Yeah. So what's been going on with Monpoc? So we talked about, uh, I don't know, Primecast a month ago or something, mm -hmm. that uh, the Apes are coming in June, and Ubercore is coming later in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that is what my hardcore focus is on right now, is finalizing the ape rules and then we just we just drafted for the first time one or two of the last Ubercore things yeah. and playtesting Ubercore because those cards get physically printed but they don't have to be printed um, that far away from the street date so we have some We have a little bit longer left. time to lock the rules. Yeah. And a bunch of the fall stuff we playtested already because the fall stuff touches back on the original six factions. So you're going to get Things like Nova ESR and Zaxor and some of those other models that were the third model that was in original Monster Apocalypse yeah. are going to come back into the game. But not Laser Knight. No, Laser Knight's dead. So I've explained this a couple of times, <laughs> but just to make it clear. So if you, if you were an old Monster Apocalypse player, um, or if you have seen those models, to make things cheaper back then, there was a body share model in the second wave. Mm -hmm. So like the first two models that came out for Guard were Defender X and Sky Sentinel. The second wave was Laser Knight and Nova ESR. But Laser Knight was Defender X's body with different arms and no backpack. So he wasn't substantially different from Defender X. Yeah. And with this time around, it being a hobby miniatures game where we're making every single model bespoke as it is, then that means we don't have to do that sharing. And Laser Knight, we killed off in the, there, in the canonical in stuff. Oswald Dog in Twitch chat says, can we get Laser Knight as a terrain feature? Um, 
I have plans for Laser Night. I have plans for Laser Night. I'm working on something. Um, Laser Knight might not be dead dead. Because the other thing about this is, like, Rekadon was Armadax's body swap. He yeah. had, a, had a longer head, and his tail was different, and instead of his arms being like this, his arms were like this. And there was hardly any difference. Mm -hmm. So Rekadon might come back, but we might reimagine what Rekadon looks like to not just be another Armadax. I mean, yeah, we've got the so opportunity. there are opportunities like that, but when we first started playtesting Monpok, we put together the groups of models we wanted back in the game, and a third monster for every faction was in there. And yeah. those third monsters were Nova ESR and Zord Magna and those other models that were new and were different sculpts. Yeah. So in the fall, we're doing other things, but we're also touching back on those six original factions and giving them another monster. Uh, before we get back to talking about what you're doing right now with Mompok, there's been a couple questions in chat we want to get to. Uh, a lot of people are asking about RPG news. Uh, there's nothing we can talk about right now. We know there's a ton of RPG fans. Anybody who pays attention to my social media knows I'm a gigantic RPG fan. I love RPGs. I play one every Sunday. Um, but nothing to announce right now because if there were any announcements, we want to make sure everyone's equipped with all the information at once yeah. and at the right time. Yeah. But I can tell you that here at Privateer Press, we are... Uh, Big, big role-playing fans, many, yeah. many of us, and especially a lot of the designers and developers. Yeah. Um, there was a question of when does the, the next Mercenary CID, or when does the Merc CID go live? Uh, we just talked about what the CIDs are, so the uh, Oblivion one just ended. Mm -hmm. We're going to do Steamroller, and then we're going to take a break from doing CIDs. So if they're asking about the dynamic update mm. for Pirates, which was the last... Mercenary CID that hasn't had a dynamic update go We're live. shooting for next week. That is, yes, hopefully next week, but other schedules, things, more important things on the timeline, having to go to print and that kind of stuff, can shift those things around workload-wise yeah. because we only have so many people and they only have so many hours during the week they can we, what, what happens, and just we've mentioned this a little bit, but you know, when we finish the CID cycle, we do our internal testing, we lock the rules, and then it goes out to a lot of other people in, yeah. in the company that have to do a lot of stuff. You know, the card database that everybody can go to and get all the cards printed for free, War Room updates, that requires like design work. Mm -hmm. Like people have to go remake those cards, and our designers have a lot of going on. And, you know, every piece of illustration you see, every book that gets printed, every box and blister slip that gets made, everything, mm -hmm. they're doing all that stuff as well. And then you've got editors who have to go double check anything, especially new rules we create, re-edit everything. So the dynamic updates, that's why they take a while, because it's got a lot of, uh, a lot more a moving lot, parts. A lot of people's hands touch those products. Yeah. And those people are also touching things that have print dates that have hard deadlines. Yeah. So possibly... There might be a thing where we're like, a request has to go to print on Friday, so we can't put any time into these other things that are more flexible until that is finished. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Mahu says our balance updates on hold on uh, post Oblivion with the CIDs. Well, one thing that's coming we've we've been talking about is the Oblivion box set that's coming that we've mentioned has a revised rule book in it that is sort of a, mm -hmm. a streamlining of a lot of things that have happened in Errata and dynamic updates and a few other small tweaks that we've been, uh, we've been doing. Yeah. We'll talk more about that in the future, probably at lock, mm -hmm. and we'll let people know kind of what's coming. But there's going to be those kind of updates. And also, we'll just do balance updates if we need yeah. to. If there's a question that comes up and we can clarify it with a slight wording change, we can do a dynamic update one month that's just something like alchemical masks, how, yeah. we, how we, we fixed alchemical masks interaction with a couple of things because it was never intended to work the way it was written. Yeah. So those kind of dynamic updates might still happen, but the, those are well, kind of like patches to problems that pop up, not balancing. Well, we, we might still like, and that's the question, is would we do balance updates? And the, thing, the answer is if we felt we ne needed to. Like the yeah. most recent things that happened to Haley 2, those didn't go through CID to my knowledge, or they did. There was one that we did an update that didn't go through, through CID. And for example, like Meyer. Meyer came out, and he did not go through CID. We do make updates yeah. if we need to. So if we determine, for example, that a model was too powerful and needed to be nerfed or was, not, or was vastly underperforming and needed a small bump, and we test it internally, that's changes that, that we would yeah. make. You know? yeah. um, was there another question I saw that we need to get to? Because people were asking about the RPGs. They were asking about things going on break. I think that's all we're going to get to right now. So let's, let's go back into Monpok a little bit before okay. we talk about So Ride the Quest. other thing about Monpok that we're working on yep. is also there is, from the original game, two factions that have not seen representation yet. Savage Swarm. Savage Swarm, your favorite because it's, it's a bee. Yeah, it's and a bee monster. Elemental Champions, the, 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 the people in giant armor that isn't cyber ninjas, it's like magical monks. Yeah, but there's like fire, water. Yeah, they're, they're elemental champions. There's one that's They're like fire Captain Planet if he was blowing things up. 
Uh, sure. Is there one for heart? There's not a heart one, sorry. Is it just wind, earth, fire? It's wind, and... earth, fire, and water. There's no heart. Because this question came up earlier. The heart's right here. Someone was like, wasn't there an old Voltron thing? Yes, there was an old Voltron thing. That license expired, because hmm. that's how licenses work. Generally, they expire. Not all of them expire, but generally, they expire. And re-upping a license costs money, and Voltron's worth more money these days because of Netflix. Hmm. So... If we ever tried to bring Voltron back, it would be a different thing than what we did before because we'd have to renegotiate that contract and stuff. So Voltron coming back is a completely different, much farther away from possibly happening thing than all the things we control like Nova ESR sure. and Zor Magna. But this fall slash early next year might be the reappearance of Savage Swarm and also Elemental Champions. Like, I'm about to start drafting rules for those monsters, and then we're going to fit them in the schedule release-wise, just like everything else we do. Sure. Also, people have been asking a lot of questions about Subterran units and Triton units, because Krakenosh and Hammerclock came out. Those will get squeezed in the schedule probably in some time, but I'm not exactly sure when. Sure. So some of that's, like, way, 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 way right. out there. But just know that Monster Apocalypse is going to be supported in a real way going forward. In it, perpetuity? It, I mean... Possibly not for like, you know, a hundred years or whatever, but for a substantial amount of time. Dream big, man. So there will, I have been teasing things like this, there will be a brand new monster at Gen Con that has never been in Monster Apocalypse before. Ever. Is it bugs? It's not. No, bugs exist. But could it be bugs? No. Uh, the hunger for really D wants a beat DGC really says, can we, can we replace some of the dev chats with a, a weekly IK RPEG session with uh, Doug Seacats at the GM, man? Tony, I know we need to do that one day, but I would love to be a player in an RPG system. But we'll figure that out, because that requires like a whole different setup in here. Eh, a lot of time and resources. Also, Doug is very busy. Doug, is Doug has really, got a lot going on really right busy. now. So Doug is about done writing all the Oblivion fiction, so he might have a break, but Doug but, has been really busy on Oblivion it, fiction. Uh, Doug is a, a wonderful human being, and he's very nice, and he's very like oh, yeah. professional, but I do feel if I walked up to Doug and said, uh, hey, Doug, would you mind taking like an oh. hour or two? Oh, Doug wants me to GM? He's in the chat. He says he'd rather be a player. And he wants me to GM. I'll GM, Doug. Yeah. But like, I, I kind of worry that if I went to Doug and be like, hey, Doug, do you mind taking an hour or two of your time every week to play uh, RPGs on the stream, that he might flash kick me in the jaw because well, he's so you know, busy right now. You know, I don't want to bother the man. Yeah. But you know what, Doug? I'll GM for you anytime you want. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about what's going on with Riot Quest. We should. So Isn't it like, like just off camera? Oh, well, yeah. I want to. You showed that box on. On, on the on the on, on the, the social on the social medias, yeah, and the Facebooks and stuff. So Riot Quest is coming out very soon, and mm -hmm. I will be demoing it at Lock and Load. Mm -hmm. We got early copies in to be able to demo yeah. it, and I want to talk about playtesting that game for a moment because it's mm -hmm. been really interesting. Riot Quest, if you haven't heard yet, is its own separate game. It's an arena. Uh, hex-based skirmish game that is super casual, super easy to learn. Probably five minutes to learn all the rules. Mm -hmm. It has no rules in common with War Machine and Hordes. And it plays in probably 20, 30 minutes. You can play 1v1 or up to four player free-for-all and no rules change. The game is built so yep. you can just add players up to four players and you just play the game. Um, the way you win the game is based off a deck of cards, bounties you're trying to claim, but that means the, the events that occur in the arena where things show up, how yeah. you win game to game is completely random. Yeah. So you can have strategies, but you have to be able to constantly sort of react to this dynamically shifting arena from game to game. Yeah. You could play a best match of three of Riot Quest with somebody and have three completely different experiences in mm -hmm. how and get all three games done in an hour. Yeah. So playtesting a game like that is A, our playtesters really love it. Tony, our video producer, is also the lead playtester on the game. And uh, Tony enjoys playtesting pretty much daily. Yeah, you guys uh, don't play test every day, but, but you he, play test frequently. Very close. Um, but a game that has that random element just means we have to play and play and play and play and play. Mm -hmm. And then every new model I design, every new thing we create, you have to play and play and play to see, like, oh, this one game is particularly good, or this one game, it just didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's for a variety of... Or it showed up, and then somebody just killed it immediately. Yeah. Right? Like, that can happen. Yeah. Then, on top of that... Every model we're making for it, we're going to release at the same time it comes out rules to use that model in War Machine and Hordes. And we're having to design and develop all those mm -hmm. and then test all those. So, you know, I've already got like 30 heroes planned out for yeah. Riot Quest. That's going to be 30 new models coming out for War Machine and Hordes. Some are faction models like the Butcher and Sir Dreyfus. Some are mercs like Balthazar. 
uh, some are Merck partisans, mm -hmm. like Eris. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to test all these different things. Like, you know, for example, Balthazar has Empower in War Machine, right? He's a Rulik Merck yeah. with Empower, which yeah. we have to test that out. The Eris is a partisan ret that we've tested with both desperate pace uh, for mage hunters mm -hmm. and a veteran leader that gives a, a veteran, uh, not veteran leader, a leadership ability that gives a swift hunter to all mm -hmm. mage hunters. Mm -hmm. Because we want these models to be good and, and useful. And then some of them are just straight up combat solos. Uh, like the wolf with no name. Mm -hmm. He just murders things. Like yeah. he's, he's a bounty hunter that shows up yeah. and shoots things. And he has some really cool abilities with what he gets to do with his, his prey. Sure. But when the pig tank comes out, we've shown the, the concept art for pig tank. I can't wait for people to get their hands on pig tanks. I want people to see it. I want to, I want to see troll armies and some minions that have like five or six pig tanks rolling around, just, just causing havoc. Mm -hmm. But one of the cool things that happened in playtest is we got the early copy in. Open yes, box. we got we got what? some we got some factory samples. M wait, mayhem. Great. The front of the box says Riot Quest Arena Miniatures Game, and it says contains 100% grade A mayhem. Mm -hmm. I want to read the side of the box real fast. Mm -hmm. The side of the box says Riot Quest, and it has a how to play. There's a how to play the game right here written on the side of the box. Step one, choose five Riot Quest models. They're inside the box. Mm -hmm. Step two, roll dice, count explosions. Those are also inside the box. Roll th uh, step three, knock out your opponent's characters because they have loot. Yeah. Step four, grab that loot quick because it's why you got up in the morning. Step five, laugh hysterically. Step six, rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot more going on in Riot Quest, but that is the basic idea. Beat the hell out of everybody and try and survive the arena and do whatever you're doing. Because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. And like, when that annoying gremlin pops up, go tackle him and, and, and get rid of him. Those yeah. kind of little, like, little objectives, but also you might flip a, you might flip a card over where a cortex pops up in one of the treasure heaps, and you've got to go get so many of your heroes adjacent to it, and your opponent can't. So suddenly everybody's trying to shift over there. Yeah. yeah. Or then at the same time, there's always two bounties in play at a time. So you've got two different objectives you can get for, and you can always just knock out enemies, and knocking out enemies scores you one point. Mm -hmm. So you might have like the cortex show up, and then you might have a bounty shows up that says um, a death trap. A walking death trap pops up in the middle of the arena, yeah. and it's running around, and it, anybody it touches just dies eats, instantaneously. Eats people. But you're, somebody can run up directly adjacent to it where they're not in the same square as it, and they can try and break it. And if you break it, you claim the card, and you, you score points. Mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes they don't involve, like, it might just be a card that's very simple. It says, like, if you do super damage to somebody, but you don't kill them. There's a card yeah. called Wake Up Call. It yeah. says, like, if you do max damage, but you don't kill them, you score this bounty as just sort of like a... A little bell ringer. My favorite like one is kill someone that is you. Yes, there's one called Frickin' Imposters. Yeah, because says, the game's a little bit like, like a MOBA in yeah. that I bring a set of heroes and you bring a set of heroes and we might both have Boomhaller or Eris or whatever on our team. And so if my Eris, if that card's up and my Eris kills your Eris, it's really awesome. For well, me. the card, that card, that bounty has two modes. It's uh -huh. kill someone of the same class because there's six hero classes. Yeah. So that way, if we were playing completely different models and neither one of us had the same characters, yeah, it still works. You could still score it. You just get a bonus if it's literally the same yeah. character. Yeah. I just like that idea of don't 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 copy me. See, Kuni Man says Eris has desperate pace and what more? Uh, desperate pace actually don't think made it through final playtesting. I'm saying yeah. we tested desperate pace. We also tested Swift Hunter for all mage hunters. Uh, haven't said which one's the final version yet, but we've tested a few different things to make sure that those models are, are useful. Mm -hmm. Then you've got models just like uh, Orsus the Chained, right? The new butcher. Who's just a giant beat stick. Yeah, but he also I believe we left him with some stuff that helps out Doom Reavers a little bit. Sure. Sure. Um, so. Razor Katu says, how did the models fit into War Machine since Riot Quest is an alternate timeline? Um, just that. And a lot of hand-waving. I mean, a it's, lot of hand-waving. It's the same way that you could say like a, a mini crate alt sculpt fits. Yeah. You, you can play them. It's just, it's, and it's like almost like the Journeyman Zeros, right? They come mm -hmm. from the past and you can play them in modern day War Machine, right? You can play Severius Zero with Tristan 2. Canonically, that makes no sense whatsoever because, spoiler, read some books. Uh, read... Uh, was it God, uh, God, what's the name? Doug, Doug. help us out. Yeah. What's, the, what's the name of that book, book in particular? I can't remember. I keep thinking of Blood of Kings because I'm thinking about Doug's work, but that, that's not that's it. That's not it. Is it Godsworn? I can't remember. Godless. Godless. Thank Everybody. you, thank you, Twitch chat. Multiple people, including Doug, did yeah. answer that question. So yeah, read Godless, you understand why Sevi Zero and Tristan 2 doesn't make like, or, a ton of sense. Or Godless. 
Dog, dogless? Do, dogless. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So it's alternate timeline models that you can basically yeah. play in your games of War Machine yeah. and Hordes. And if you want to play narratively, right? If you want to play uh, a storyline, then you should choose what models you can and can't play with. I would say the same thing is true for multiple versions of the existing models. If you want to play a narrative storyline where the lore is up to date, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't play with Thagrosh 1. Thagrosh 1 doesn't exist anymore. He's mutated, mm -hmm. right? No, you can't go back to being the original Thagrosh. You have to only be the second version of Thagrosh. So if you want these alt timeline characters and you want to play a narrative game, create a story for that. Otherwise, for straight competitive play, they're just new models with new abilities you get to use that will look great in your army and be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, the other thing I wanted to show everybody, because we got all the materials in the box, all the cards, all the tokens, and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. But I've a lot of people ask... We're making the models ourselves, but a bunch of other stuff is being printed other places. Uh, other people asked, uh, how big is the map you play on? Because this is a, a hybrid miniatures board game. It's hobby miniatures, but you play on a mm -hmm. board that's got hexes, and you move everybody. Yep. Every space can only have one miniature in it, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I wanted to show off the full color map that is now completely done. And Tony and I actually played our first game using uh, the real map. Can you get all that? Oh my god. Tony, oh, do I need to middle, back up? It's sparkly. Did I get oh, it all? Little, come a little bit toward me. You're, you're cut off on the edge. There you go. So yeah, it uses up a little bit less than three by three. Yeah. Total space. And the blue things are spawn gates and the gold things are, are treasure piles. Treasure beacons. Treasure That's beacons. where treasure chests might show up. up. The hazard spaces are obstacle spaces. Mm -hmm. And then the right quest symbol in the dead center is the center of the map, where the center of map tile matters because things often show up there. Yeah. Now, the cool thing we get to do with this, first off, the amount of space it takes is basically standard card table size. Yeah, so, it's like 27 by 27 or something like that. So if you're playing Mompok, if you're playing any sort of like CCG card game, you've got enough room yeah. to play, play Riot yeah. Quest. But while all the... the the, she, the, the size of the actual like poster or whatever, if we ever do neoprene mats for Riot Quest, will always be sort of this size. The layout, we can be completely oh, yeah. different. We're not always going to have a perfectly circular arena. That's just the starter this box is, arena. Yeah, this is the basic one to get you started. I absolutely want to do things that are like dungeons with multiple levels, where some hexes are here, some are here, and some are back here, and there's like teleporters between, and there's, you're completely cut off from every different level, or things like you know, a pair of pirate ships where the, you, there's the sea in the middle and you can't go through, and there's yep. like gangplanks and stuff like that. We're going to get really creative with the maps, which you can provide really, really different play experiences. So uh, DGC says, please come in neoprene. Hopefully we'll have neoprene mats for, for Riot Quest. I think that that's a very strong possibility. We did announce those are coming for... Monster Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Monster Apocalypse one, getting them. The first one has been shown off at Adepticon and at Kingdom Con. When when that one gets finalized with mostly packaging, that's what we're kind of waiting on right now is how we're going to package it. Mm -hmm. Then we will know what we are selling them for and how fast they take to create and all that stuff. Yeah. And we are talking about another Monpoc neoprene mat this year, but no promises. Yep. Um, anybody who was asking about measurements, those are fifty millimeter hexes. Yep. So they fit all three War Machine base sizes yes. besides Battle Engines because uh, size so Battle Engines are a little bit crazy. Base size in uh, in Riot Quest doesn't matter. No, nope, but they're either space. but they come with a base and they're either a 30, 40, or 50 mil base because since they can also be used in War Machine and Hordes, we did give them bases a to keep your models standing up and b so they would translate over to War Machine. That's and the Hordes only rules. thing bases are for is to keep models from falling over. Really, it, it is. Yeah. But like there may be some stuff we put out that's like terrain for the maps and different things oh, in the yeah. future that won't have bases and we'll make sure those stand up on their own. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was really cool finally getting to play our first game, Tony. How'd you enjoy it? I'm calling you up on the mic real fast. How'd you enjoy finally getting... I mean, you, you and I have been playtesting this game for like, what? Months? Eight, nine months or something like that? Yeah, this, was our, there. this was our first chance to finally play with the real, the real map. Did you like it? Uh, it's always amazing to me how different it is once you actually get to see the components after looking at, you know... Paper. Kind of just <laughs> white paper yeah. and just, you know, it's all details. It's hard to read and find. And then all of a sudden, uh, it just really changes everything, being able to use all the tokens and the actual visual unit use. cards yeah. with the Yeah, you portraits. guys played with the real bounty cards and yeah. the real hero treasure card, cards. Real treasure yeah. cards, yeah. real hero box, yeah. Real gear cards, everything like that. It'd have been funny, Tony, if I called you on the mic. I'm like, how'd you like it? And you're like, it sucked. And you just <laughs> clicked. And you're I like, didn't click. like it. Okay. Very unlikely. It'd be like, oh no. But yeah, neoprene mats, we understand with these hybrid board games we're putting out that we're planning on supporting mm -hmm. for a very long time. Yeah. Monster Apocalypse is not going away anytime soon. Riot Quest has got plans out through 2020, 
one. Yeah, because you said you had 30 models, but we're not dropping those 30 models no. this summer. And there's more coming after that. Well, so, of course. yeah. Yeah, we understand that, that a lot of people have been talking about uh, neoprene maps, how much they like them. And we understand that, you yeah. know, poster maps, easy to fit in a box, right? You can fit this and inside a starter box. It keeps the box cheaper. It keeps the box cheaper and it keeps the cost down for everybody. But when you play, you want, you want the highest quality you can get. Mm -hmm. Some people do. Some people are happy playing on their poster maps, but some people want to spend yeah. 20, 30 bucks, whatever it might end up being, and have themselves a, a super fancy rollout mat. So we hear you, we agree, and we're going to see whatever we can do. Yeah. But we, once we get this first one done, we'll, we'll have all the logistics figured out for doing more. Yep. And uh, so right now we're just play testing a ton of stuff. And for people asking like what's kind of coming next, one thing I want to point everybody to is that lock and load is next month and it's the end of next month. And there's been a lot of questions about RPGs, what's coming up for Mompok, what's coming up for Riot Quest, what's coming up for War Machine, all these kind of things. And uh, if you've never seen lock and load before or been to one, we have a keynote every year. Uh huh. And which we also stream. Which we stream. So there will be another lock and load keynote. And I'll admit, there's some things we have to be coy about right now because the keynote's coming and there's stuff that we can't spoil. Uh, yes. So I would say definitely watch, if you're not coming to Lock and Load, watch the stream and make sure you keep an eye on the keynote because there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff that we're going to show off there. A lot of things I think are going to surprise people and a lot of just fun things. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's going to be a Riot Quest video and like I've been working with Tony and them on it and I think it's going to be really fun and get to show off the game and show off some of the yeah. cool stuff coming for it. Yeah. And we'll have some painted models, and some of us will have models there, and we'll be able to play games with people yep. and demo. People are asking, that is the same size box as a Monster Apocalypse box. Yes, it comes with... That's how big that is. So yeah, the Riot Quest, it, inside, it has five miniatures, 15 dice, the arena map, the rule book, uh, five hero stat cards, 38 total other game cards mm -hmm. split between a, a variety of different types of cards you need, uh, and then a full sheet of tokens, because there's, like... Ten different token types. There's a bunch of tokens. There's a there's a whole bunch of. You got band aids for your people's damage, and you got you got loot token little little skull coins. Little skull coins inside of yeah. there, and a bunch of other good stuff. So yeah, but it's the size of a monpox starter, mm -hmm. and it is a like the monpox starter. It's a one player starter. Yeah. So it has everything that one player needs yeah. to be able to to, to go. Because when you play, you can play with up to ten heroes, but that comes with five because it's the baseline to to feel how the game. Place. Yeah, so we've got a couple questions, or we're going to wrap up dev chat here in a second, mm -hmm. but let's get a couple questions that chat has had. Uh, let's see, somebody asked about the size of the box. Yep, same size as the Mopoc. Yep. Are the Lady Doom Reavers a full unit? Uh, there are play you get two models, and like all the sort of mini crate alt sculpt style models, mm -hmm. you can replace uh, as many in a unit as you like. There's actually rules in our organized play in like Steamroller that says, uh, I think we used the Bombshell Bombardier as the example. It said if you replaced every single model in the normal bombardier unit with bombshell bombardiers, that's legal. Just make sure you clearly indicate which one the leader is. Mm -hmm. So if you want to replace your Doom Reaver units, uh, get three sets of the, the, the two ladies and, and have the six, the six lady unit. Just make yeah. sure that in some way, you're very clearly indicating who the, the leader is. That could be, uh, you know, a paint job is usually the best way to do it. Yeah. If you paint them all with a certain thing and then you do the armor in a different way or even maybe like face paint or something like that. Uh, J Herb says, do you need two starters to play? Each player will need their own starter to play Riot Quest. It's yeah. like Monster Apocalypse, how there's with the Protector star uh, starters and the Destroyer yeah. starters. Everybody needs their own starter. And there's not going to be multiple starters. The same five models comes in every starter, and then models are sold in blister packs and other ways down the road. Yeah. Uh, pirate part, hats. Part, it just says, somebody just says pirate hats. Part of Nick's whose question is, asked, is, is asking about how we feel or something's impacted CID, but I, the question's kind of cut off and I didn't get the whole context. So sorry, Nixu, that I mixed it. Uh, let's get some of the... Uh, I'll talk to you later on Discord, Nixu. We'll catch up. Uh, so sorry, I wasn't ignoring you. Your question just scrolled past as I was kind of reading it. Uh, somebody wants to know about the Monpot Corgi. Oz, is there a Monpot Corgi coming? No. No. Um, and somebody else asked what models are in the box. Mm -hmm. It's the models on the cover. The models in the box is uh, Eris, Fortune Hunter of Ios, Sir Dreyfus the Storm Knight, Dez, Gubbin, and Balthazar Bamfist. Mm -hmm. um, Gubbin's the best. Someone's asking if one person buys the box and other people buy models. Because you're going to have the starter box for Riot Quest, and then we're going to have hero expansions, which are individual blisters that add another person to your crew. The mm -hmm. max size of your crew is 10. Uh, and there's going to be other expansions Ooh. that add... Ooh. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tony. There's other expansions that are going to add other things to the game. Different maps, new types of cards, new bounty decks terrain, things yeah. like that. 
Could one person buy the starter and other people buy heroes? It would be difficult because the dice are one of your resources in the game, and everybody yeah. needs their own set of dice. I think if somebody already had a set of Monpok dice, and you had a wear, way, to, you every every time you play, only one person uses their bounty deck and treasure deck, and everybody shares that. But all other cards and all other tokens yeah. a player needs. It would be very very difficult to do. It is possible, but you'd have to have already have some resources on hand. Yeah, the the dice is the biggest thing because. Just like Monster Apocalypse, this game uses dice as tokens to a certain extent, and every player needs their own set of dice. Yeah. Uh, is there a price set for Riot Quest box by Smart Child? Not yet. Uh, Luck God says, are those minis available outside the box set? These five will not be. They will just be in the box set. I mean, I'd never say never, but the plan right now is they're only in that box set. The other ones will be available in individual hero expansions or larger expansions that we might do other teams in the future that have yeah. more things yeah. in them. Uh, Halbert says, is Chuck Dogwood going to be in Riot Quest? I mean, we did an entire insider showing us concept art. I mean, so, I that mean, was just an April Fool's thing, though. I mean, that would never be a real... That would that would never be a real thing. It was on April Fool's. I mean, no, no one believes anything that happens on the internet on the 1st of April. That's just how the internet works. You could, you could say something completely heartfelt and sincere that was 100% true, and if it happened on April 1st, no one would believe you. There would be no way to convince anybody until they saw it in real life. Do you think they'll believe me when the model comes out? I mean, they might. They okay. might. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I barely believe you. Uh, <laughs> when that model. Mac Tech says, "Can you say which Minoff person made it into Riot Quest?" So one thing, uh, uh, when you look at this box, you see Eris as a recognizable character, and the other four are all new characters. Mm -hmm. So Riot Quest, the heroes, the the first thirty that we've planned out, um, some of them are recognizable characters. They're people that that survive the apocalypse. Tony, bring up that. Bring up one of those Riot Quest images again. Uh, so, you know, for this image, for example, you see Gorman the Mad, and you see Boomhaller, and you see Eris. Mm -hmm. These are all known characters, but then... You also see Harlow hold them high. Well, Harlow's a new, a new character. Yeah. Dez is a new character. Sir Dreyfus is a new character. James is a new character. Balthazar Bamfist is a new character. The majority of heroes yep. are new characters. They're people that have come, have risen to power and joined a salvage team post the apocalypse. But, because yep. most everyone we know is dead or gone. But a few people, some of the toughest people, have made it through and they survived. And so you will see a mix. So there are going to be very Minoff specific models released mm -hmm. in Riot Quest a little bit later in that initial wave of, of 30 that's coming out over the next year plus. Yeah. Um, but I think everyone's going to be quite pleased when they we're see gonna, it. We're going to touch on basically all of the factions in War Machine and Hordes in some way. Uh, the Grimkin model I designed is probably the, Grimkin, <laughs> the most Grimkin ridiculous Grimkin and fun thing. Also, your favorite. I, I really hope we get to show that thing off soon. I can't talk about it just yet. Yeah. Uh, Oswald Dog has asked when Hamilton is arriving in Riot Quest. He's not. <laughs> so, looks like we got through most of the questions. Uh, Nixie says, any confirmed dead you want to share? Yes, Turok. And I say that because I want to make a Riot Quest map that well, is on Turok's corpse. He's not confirmed dead until you make that map. It's just fake news until then. I, that's what I want. I want. I'm, I plan on designing a map that the, you are running around the yeah. top of Turok's the, head. The question was, can you confirm someone's dead? And then you said, yes, I want to kill Turok. Oh, sorry. Yes, Turok. So the plan... Until is, Matt tells me otherwise. The plan is that, yeah. Well, but you, there's other dragons you could put up. You could, you could make a dragon corpse of other dragons. We've got numerous other dragons. Yeah, and Doug says, if you take his onthought, like, his body would be left behind, right? You could, like, yeah. he would still become more powerful. So I just want people running around on his corpse. Mm -hmm. the, the, the corpse of the body. The uh, corpse but, of the body. The corpse of, well, because dragons are weird, that, man. They kind of, like, live the on. The corpse of the body. Can we just break that down? Just a dead dragon. Doug, <laughs> do bodies have corpses or do corpses have bodies? Listen, dragons are weird. They're <laughs> unnatural. Totally. Yeah, but pyromalphic or... Uh, Charizard? Yeah. That one, other one? What's Did you say Charizard? <laughs> Char Charsog? Charsog. Doug, yeah, Charizard. What's his name? Charsog? Charsog. Yeah, 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 that one. Okay. There's Ma other dragons we could kill. Max Tech says, uh, will there be Riot Quest lore that explains what happened? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's, actually, there's a rule book, and well, obviously book, there's a rule book, but in the rule book, there's bio, bios on these five characters, mm -hmm. and then an intro section that talks sort of about what ended up happening. Yeah. And yeah. how we got to this, this place, as narrated by... Some wizened old wizard with a giant, you know, storybook, and then the the heroes jumping in and giving their two cents the entire time in the actual narration of the the rule book. So, mm -hmm. Charizard. I mean, that's close to his name. Look, he's in the chat right now. 
Uh, I can tell you one person that is definitely dead in the Riot Quest timeline. Haley. She'd have fixed this. She can, she can mess with time. Maybe it's her fault. <gasps> Maybe it's Haley's fault. Maybe Riot Quest exists because Haley was screwing around with things too much. I really thought you were going to say, like, one of the, actual, the dead characters we know is dead. Like, I can totally confirm that Severius is dead in this timeline. I can confirm Morgul's dead this timeline because of one of the models that's coming out later for it. Now, Morgul hasn't used that weapon for years now. That's just been laying around, like, in his closet. In there's his, there's like, a model that has weapon, Morgul's glove on his, his hand, his weapon by the way. rack. Like, yeah, he's Morgul, Morgul hasn't... Morgul's moved on beyond that. You think he lets people take that glove? He... You, you can't keep track of all your stuff during the apocalypse. <laughs> That's the, the point of Riot Quest happens, is to go get everybody's stuff. Yeah, when the apocalypse happens, who knows? <sighs> who knows where that glove went? I mean, it's only one of the gloves. Like, maybe maybe the Scorn Town, whatever, that Morgul kept his weapon rack in exploded, mm -hmm. and one glove went that way, and one glove went that way, and somebody's just walking around the desert, and they're like, ooh, look at this weird knife glove. I, I, I like this. I have no context for where this came from, but I'm going to put it on. You know who else is dead? Definitely. In the, in the Riot Quest timeline? Sturgis. It's because he's also dead canonically in the main timeline. Yeah, he's a dead guy. So, yeah. Well, we've been rambling for about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. Updating everybody with what's coming up for Monpoc, mm -hmm. what we've been doing, talking about Riot Quest. Next week, we'll be back. Uh -huh. oh, Doug, it's not Hungerford's fan fiction. <laughs> Just to clarify, it, it is 100% non-canonical. But it's not all Hungerford's fan fiction. Some other people have had some impacts in there. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, next week we'll be back for the Steamroller CID, the arrival of it. Mm -hmm. So join us then, 10 a.m. Pacific. Also, come hang out tomorrow. Jordan's going to be on Get Your Paint On. So please come see us then. And what's, then what's he painting? I don't know what Jordan's painting. Are you going to lie Tony, about you... what he's painting again, Tony? He'll be painting up the Bride of Arcadius. Oh, oh sweet. For real this time? For real. And then, not this Friday, but a week from Friday will be our staff showdown. We'll, yeah, be, playing, we'll be playing Monster Apocalypse, and then later on in the month we'll be having Primecast Live. Join us for those. And uh, we will see you all very soon. Just one last reminder. Again, Lock and Load is the next month. Uh-huh. It, it is the 21st, so it's, uh, it's more than one month away, but less than two. Yeah, so pblockandload.com. I believe that more hotel block uh, We did. Space we opened up more hotel blocks. Just opened up, so I there's more space. I think we also... Enlarge the size of some hangouts. I think I think a few hangouts maxed out, and we're trying to get them in bigger rooms or whatever. Yes. Yeah, so think. real fast, we have the seminars and the hangouts, and the Riot Quest hangout maxed out like sixty-four people or whatever it was, like like that. I think so, the Infernals did too, or the Oblivion the one. one of, there, there were three that maxed out really quick. It was one was an event, I believe. Like what was a tournament, and then Riot Quest and Infernals maxed out like immediately. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get more space for those seminars and those hangouts where we talk about those things yeah. that are coming out. Yeah. So everybody, enjoy your lunches. I hope you all have a Jimmy John's nearby. We'll see you tomorrow for Get Your Paint On. Until next time, goodbye everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>